All right, David Harry here, and in this video, I'm going to be doing some real world disk speed testing, and I will be comparing a Thunderbolt 4 SSD to a Thunderbolt 5 SSD. Now, the Thunderbolt 4 SSD that I will be testing will be one which is using the Acasis TBU405 Pro M1 enclosure, which is a Thunderbolt 4 to NVMe enclosure, and inside that, I will have a Western Digital 4TB SN850X SSD. Then I will take out the Western Digital S SSD and I will put it inside of the Acasus TB501, which is a Thunderbolt 5 NVMe enclosure, and then compare like for like with the same SSD, but between the two different speeds for Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt 5. Now, I will be using my M4 Max MacBook Pro for this particular test because that's obviously got Thunderbolt 5 sockets on it. Now, there's just a couple of things to mention here before I get into the test. What it is, the folder that I am using is actually a little bit smaller than what I would normally test with. And the reason why is because I have now come across a repeatable issue with all the Macs as far as their SSDs are concerned and basically caching issues. I will touch upon that later in my end summary. Also, I do have what is supposed supposedly a technically faster SSD, which is the Samsung 990 Pro, and I've got the four terabyte version of that. However, there are also problems using this in any type of enclosure, which is like going to be getting used for like lots of data writing and reading. And also it has got a bit of a temperature problem as well. I will touch upon that at the end of the video. Anyways, let me dive into this and I will come back at the end of the video for a summary and explain a few things. Okay, so to start off with then, I am going to test the Thunderbolt 4 SSD. And to do this, what I will do is some real world disk speed testing okay so the folder that i will use will be this one here and as we can see this is 250,000 megabytes in size which is 250 gigabytes and it consists of 1346 items now as far as the max ssd internally is concerned this has 553 gigabytes worth of spare space so we definitely can't run into any issues here to do with any kind of low disk space interference and also the ssd itself is being formatted to apfs so what i'm going to do first of all is to just drag and drop this folder onto the ssd let me just start that so there we go start so what i am doing here is to measure the read speed of the SSD. Now, I've also got Activity Monitor open here, and you know, if you understand what's going on here to do with the read and write speeds and stuff, you can keep an eye on that. It will definitely give you a fairly good idea as to what is going on. However, just remember, it is more like giving you snapshots and stuff. The true way to actually define the real world, like you know, disk speeds, is to do the timings and to work out the bit rates from there anyway as we can see this is just going through nicely so what i'm going to do is to just speed up through this until i get to the end i'll come back in and then i will hit pause and we will get a timing for the right speed okay i'm going to come back in here and get ready to hit pause as soon as that file is transferred over or that folder there we go okay so i'm going to call that one minute in fact i'll round it up to one minute and 28 seconds so let me just make a note of that okay now what i'm going to do is to delete the folder from the desktop i'll just clear the bin the only reason why i do this clearing the, of the bin is just so that we don't have any residual cached files around anywhere which could then obviously maybe get in the way of things so right now we are clear for the desktop to drag and drop this folder back to it so i'm going to hit reset and do the same thing so drag start and obviously what i'm doing here is to test for the read speed of the external thunderbolt 4 ssd Okay, I'm just going to come back in here and get ready to hit pause once that folder has moved to... And there we go. Okay, I'm just going to round that up to 1 minute and 23 seconds. So let me just make a note of that. So 1, 
23. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just to swap everything over now. So I've got the Thunderbolt 5 SSD. Okay, so I've just swapped over the SSD that was inside of the Thunderbolt 4 enclosure and I've now put it inside of the Thunderbolt 5 enclosure. This is just so that I'm testing the exact same SSD, not just the same model number, but the exact same SSD. And I've also formatted this to APFS. So let me just reset that timer. I'm going to drag the folder from the desktop to the SSD. So let me just do that first. So drop start. And as we will see here, we're going to get an indication with Activity Monitor as to what the speeds are. However, and once again, we will take our real world speed test from the actual time that it takes because that is absolutely definitive. We can't actually like, you know, measure anything other than the speed that it takes to do something. But as we will clearly see here, we've definitely got a, well, a, a much bigger increase in these read and write speeds here as far as Activity Monitor is concerned. And there's probably no need for me to speed this one up because it is almost done. Like if you give us a moment, let me just get ready to hit pause here. So pause. Okay, I'm going to round that up to 44 seconds for the right. So if you just give us a second, so 44 seconds. Okay, now what I'm going to do is to once again delete the folder from the desktop. I'll empty the bin. I will do a reset on the stopwatch and again I will time the folder being dragged back to the desktop so drop start okay so what we're doing here is to measure the read speed of the external Thunderbolt 5 SSD now of course I've already shown a number of times in different videos the speed of the Mac anyway with its internal SSD so we know that basically the Mac won't be bottlenecking at this point however the Mac does have an issue and I basically mentioned that quickly at the video I, I, at the beginning of the video I will I will mention it again at the end but this video is not about the problem with the Mac's caching now if you give me a, give me a second this is almost done hold on nearly catching myself out here there we go 39 I'm gonna round that up to 40 okay so as far as the read speed was concerned I'm gonna call that 40 seconds right what I'm gonna do here is to do some quick calculations for these bit rates I'll pop them up on screen in a second and then I will do an end summary okay so as far as the bit rates are concerned the total file size for the folder was 250,000 megabytes. So as far as the Thunderbolt 4 SSD was concerned, for its write speed, we divide 250,000 by 88 because it took 88 seconds to run the test. And that gives us 2,840, which is 2,840 megabytes per second. And then as far as the read speed was concerned for the Thunderbolt 4 SSD, SSD. That once again was 250,000 as far as the folder size was concerned. Divide that by 83 because that's how many seconds it took to do. And that gives us 3,012, which is 3,012 megabytes per second. Now moving over to the Thunderbolt 5 SSD, as far as the write speed is concerned, that took 44 seconds. So once again, we simply divide 250,000 by 44 which is the time taken in seconds and we get 5681 which is 5681 megabytes per second then with respect to the read speed for the thunderbolt 5 ssd once again we take the 250,000 and divide that by the time taken as far as seconds are concerned which is 40 and that gives us 6250 which is 6200 50 megabytes per second okay so to my end summary now the first thing i want to mention here is you may have noticed something when i was doing the timings just then two of those results you may have thought i'd hit the stop button like slightly late what it is the mac makes its like notification noise when it's done the transfer 
before the actual folder is actually full. So what I always do is wait until the folder is full before I hit pause or stop. Now the thing is, as far as I'm concerned, it is not the notification of the sound that is actually like denoting that the folder is actually moved. I think it's when you visually see it on the desktop or on the, the external drive. Now the thing with that is, I think I'm doing it the right way. However, if anybody thinks that it should be the other way, where you should go by when the actual notification noise sounds then just take it that they, these tests are faster than what I've just said there however I do always wait until the folder is actually full on like its transfer hence why a couple of those things might have looked like I was slightly late but it wasn't okay now as far as the results are concerned let me just quickly flash through them because they're very interesting to be honest with the Thunderbolt 4 write speed, that was 2,840 megabytes per second, which within itself is extremely impressive. However, the Thunderbolt 5 speed for the write was 5,681 megabytes per second. Now, it just happens that the Thunderbolt 5 result was exactly twice the speed of the Thunderbolt 4 result, plus one extra megabyte within the speed. That just happens to be by, like, you know, chance. That wasn't by design or anything. But nonetheless, yes, the Thunderbolt 5 SSD results were twice as fast for the writing. Now, when we go to the read speeds, it was 3,012 for the Thunderbolt 4, once again, super fast but the Thunderbolt 5 was 6250 for the read speed now again with those speeds there the Thunderbolt 5 was actually more than twice as fast so that's going to give you a general idea about the differences between Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt 5 with respect to their speeds let me just get that out the way anyways let me get down to some of the issues that I've been having during my speed tests. And the first one is going to be this thing that I've mentioned to do with the Mac's internal storage. Now, the problem that I'm having here is that until I started using these like really fast SSDs, it wasn't apparent to me that the Mac actually has a cache limit, which can easily be kind of like, you know, caught up with and becomes a problem when you are using very fast external SSDs. So I first noticed this with the TB501 Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 5 enclosure here, it paired up with basically anything that I would put into it or any fast SSD. And what was happening when I was writing the data back to the max SSD, which would be the read speed for the enclosure, and um, partway through, like, you know, the activity monitor was showing that it would drop down considerably. So it'd be somewhere in the region of 6,000 megabytes per second. But then at some point, it was dropping down and only going to about 1,500 megabytes per second. That was clearly the cache being hit with inside the SSD of the Mac there. Again, it's not something that I've noticed before because the only way that you would really notice stuff like this is by using like you know a big enough test like file or test folder but also pushing it into the Mac as fast as possible and that is what Thunderbolt 5 has allowed me to do now the thing is I've not done like that video yet to show people that particular problem only because I just know there's going to be Mac fanboys out there who will go yeah but that could be your en enclosures doing that blah 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 however I might still do it um, sooner rather than later because I've got some fast Thunderbolt 4 enclosures and they too also show the same problem Problem. It just so happens that the Thunderbolt 5s show it better because the problem looks bigger with the Thunderbolt 5s because the Thunderbolt 5s are basically transferring the data in much faster. And so we actually hit the cache limit quicker. And obviously we can see the issue happen, you know, like more obviously. Now, the best way for me to show this would be to use two Thunderbolt 5 SSDs because in that instance, I could show them reading and writing to one another and being super fast and not dropping their data rates and then show either of them then doing the same thing with the actual max internal storage and that would definitely rule out anything other than the cache being a problem inside the Mac. However, I don't have the second Thunderbolt 5 enclosure yet. So what I might do is jump the gun on that one and use the uh, use the USB 4 enclosure and the Thunderbolt 5 and show that they both do it. And if two separate things are doing it like that, you definitely know that the issue lies within the Mac. 
Now, let me just get on to the uh, the Samsung 990 Pro. Now, some people might be thinking, well, hold on, Dave, if you've got one of those, if you'd have used that in this test, it would have been better than the Western Digital because the Samsung is faster. Technically, on paper, the Samsung is faster. However, and once again, there are issues with this SSD. And the first issue is going to be its cache. Now, the thing with the Samsung, it has definitely got a smaller cache compared to the Western Digital. These are both the four terabyte variations here that I'm talking about. So the 990 Pro compared to the SN850X has definitely got a much smaller cache compared to it. And what I've found out with that one, once again, doing the these particular types of tests and use in very large folder sizes is that I will suddenly see a drop off in the data rate as far as activity monitor is concerned and you can also feel it within the timings as well so the thing is if I were to have done say the 250 or the 300 gigabyte test folder the Samsung would have been probably fine for that um, however I think it's somewhere in the region of 350 gigabytes maybe somewhere in that region it might be a little bit more i'm not not entirely sure i can't remember off the top of my head but that's where the samsung has issues now the thing with that is once you then use the western digital in place of it if you're going to use a like a big folder or a lot of data to move in one go over the course of that particular data dump, the Western Digital will be noticeably faster because it won't throttle down due to its caching issues. Now, of course, the Western Digital will have a cache limit. However, I've got a feeling that it's somewhere within the region of a terabyte. It's massive. So I will try and do a video about that one at some point as well. But with that, I would definitely need to use external storage going to one another on four terabytes because I don't have the space with inside my Mac for such a large folder to actually do that type of testing but like I say I will get round to it at some point but the other problem as well with the Samsung unfortunately is going to be thermal throttling it massively heats up which is something that I've shown in other videos however it's far more likely that you would hit its cache limit before its thermal throttle point so there are a couple of considerations with the the 990 Pro which is the reason why I personally don't use it with like you know like my main SSD drives or my main enclosures and stuff like that Anyways, hopefully there's been enough video in here for people to kind of like take on board, especially with the actual testing itself. And hopefully that will give you a good idea as to, you know, roughly whereabouts you would stand if you went for either Thunderbolt 4 or Thunderbolt 5 as far as an external SSD is concerned. And obviously the types of enclosures and the SSD that I've used here may also give you an idea of what you may or may not want to get hold of. And on that point as well, there'll be links to all these things in the video description description below now if you're into this type of stuff check out my other videos recently because i've been doing a lot of these types of things i will also be doing more of this type of stuff but i just want to make it clear that my channel isn't about testing ssds <laughs> it just so happens that i've got into this like thing where it's because i'm building my own ssds and i'm really shocked with some of the results and really made up with some of the results so i just do videos based on the things that i do myself however i will be getting back to doing other the things to do with the max and also like video capture and a whole bunch of other things soon but if you're into the ssd type stuff then check out my recent videos and there will be more of them coming up as well anyways if you don't mind giving this video a thumbs up if you've liked it i would really appreciate it and of course a sub to the channel will be absolutely tremendous i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now